Now let's move on to discuss the dermal layer of the skin, including the different layers and cell types found there. The dermis is the deeper layer of the skin between the epidermis and the underlying tissues of the subcutaneous layer. The dermal layer is thicker than the epidermal skin and contains the blood vessels and innervation for both layers. The dermis itself is made up of two main layers, the papillary layer and the reticular layer. Here's an enlarged image of the dermis to reveal the different layers. The papillary dermis is in conjunction and in a border with the epidermis. The next deeper layer is the reticular dermis. Also evident on this image is the dermal papillae which extend up into the epidermis and the epidermal ridges which extend down into the dermis. Within the dermal papillae are capillary loops. The following is a clinical note on skin cancer. Skin cancer is the most common form of human cancer, and individuals with fair skin are the most susceptible to developing skin cancer because of the decreased melanin in their skin. However, all individuals are at increased risk of developing skin cancer with prolonged exposure of unprotected skin to the sun. There are three main classifications of skin cancer, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. The most serious type is malignant melanoma, and the following skin examination mnemonic is useful for the detection of this disease. A, B, C, D. A is for asymmetry. B is for border. Melanomas usually have an irregular border. C is for color. A melanoma can be different colors such as brown, red, and blue. D is for diameter. Any skin growth greater than 5 millimeters can be potentially dangerous. The papillary dermis is the upper layer of the dermis. And this layer projects dermal papillae up into the epidermis. These contribute to the ridges that produce the fingerprint. The dermis includes a connective tissue that protects the organs inside as well as the lymphatics, and the blood vessels and nerve endings that serve both the dermal layer and the epidermal layer. The second layer or deeper layer of the dermis is the reticular dermis. And this is made of a dense irregular connective tissue and adipose tissue. The reticular dermis contains sweat glands, sebaceous oil glands, and blood vessels and the collagen fibers from the reticular dermis extend into the papillary dermis and this fixes the two layers together. Because of this, the meshing of the two layers, the boundary between the reticular dermis and the papillary dermis is not necessarily distinct. The different cell types within the dermis. Cells within the dermis include hair cells, sebum producing cells, pacinian corpuscles, macrophages, fibroblasts, and adipocytes. These cells function to deliver blood to the region, detect changes in pressure, produce the oils that are delivered to the surface of the skin, and contribute to lowering body temperature. The integrity of the dermis can change. The dermis supports the skin and gives it strength and firmness. So therefore, changes in aging, exposure to ultraviolet radiation from the sun, decreases in hormone, can reduce the thickness of the dermis, and this leads to wrinkles and sagging skin. The dermis can also be stretched and distorted, for example, during pregnancy. This leads to the formation of stretch marks. And with stretch marks, the loss of skin elasticity and the breakage of the collagen fibers leads to a permanent change in the skin. Skin blood flow. The dermis delivers the blood to supply the skin, including the dermis and the epidermis. The blood vessels exist in the subcutaneous reticular dermis boundary, and they supply the subcutaneous layer and the skin itself. From the plexus of blood vessels in the subcutaneous layer and reticular dermis boundary, small arteries pass upward into the papillary dermis. Here they form another 
blood vessel plexus. From this plexus, in the papillary area, loops of capillaries enter the dermal epidermal border, and these exist in the dermal papillae. These capillaries supply the epidermis with oxygen and nutrients. The following is a clinical note on skin ulcers. Skin ulcers or bed sores are localized shedding of the epithelium that occurs due to a compromised circulation in that region of the skin. They typically occur in individuals wearing a splint for long periods of time or who are lying in bed continually. The skin overlying joints and bony prominences are most often affected. Skin ulcers can be prevented or treated through frequent position changes in bed and the use of specialized beds such as one with inflating air coils. Beneath the dermal layer of the skin is the subcutaneous tissue or the hypodermis. This layer is the bottom layer of the integumentary system. It's between the dermis and the underlying muscles and organs. This tissue is primarily for fat protection and energy storage. The layer is extensive in babies where it's called baby fat. In adults, the subcutaneous tissue thins out and disperses. It collects in certain regions, such as in the arms, the lower back, and in the neck region. As with other tissues in the human body, aging affects the integument. The effects include, number one, a decrease in the number of melanocytes. This leads to pale skin that's now more susceptible to UV radiation. Number two is a decrease in active hair follicles and therefore the hair becomes more sparse. Number three is a reduction in sebum. This leads to the skin becoming dry and cracked as less sebum is produced and secreted. And number four is a thinning of the skin layers. This causes sagging of the skin and wrinkles. The following is a clinical note on liposuction. Liposuction is a type of cosmetic surgery in which unwanted deposits of fat are removed from the body through a cannula under suction. There are a number of different techniques including tumescent liposuction which is the most common type and this technique involves the injection of fluid where the fat will be removed from. The second is a super wet technique. This is similar to tumescent technique but involves less fluid. The third type is ultrasound assisted liposuction. This involves the use of ultrasonic vibrations to liquefy the fat cells that are then removed. Although liposuction can immediately remove fat from the body, in the long term fat can be deposited in the same location if there are not adequate diet and lifestyle changes.